Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. This is turn 151. Let's jump into things. Okay, so, um, we've got Mashtagu the Bishopfish has claimed the throne of life in the name of, uh, Relay. So this is interesting. I think this is actually, um, Hinnom's underwater throne. So I'm assuming Relay has been teleport ting hopping pawn something along those lines and has gotten to um hinnom's underwater throne which is really interesting very cool um we have done uh, a whole a whole bunch of stuff um we're not going to cover uh, every single one of these but we've done a bunch of cloud trapezing to get into positions and try to assassinate different targets We've done a bunch of summons, Naiad Warriors, Anzus, Yetis, um, Corpse Construction, uh, more Infernal Tempests, more Kusarikus, more Forces of Darkness. We've done a Flame Spirit, more Tartarians. We have taken hits from Mind Hunts. Um, so let's see here, we resisted the attack, and again here we resisted the attack. Very cool. Um... We have a report in Raphabolia. Uh, oh, interesting. I didn't even notice this. A storm of fireballs appeared out of nowhere and struck the army. Among the killed was Vamp33, the Vampire Lord. I didn't even notice this, um, but yeah, we, we got hit. Um, we lost some units. Good to know. Um, we had some Gift of Reason go off, we did a Divine Name, we did an Augury, found nothing, and yeah, uh, a huge Earth Elemental popped out of nowhere and attacked someone in Raphabolia, was it someone important? It was an Air Goodoo, or no, an Earth Goodoo, so, let's see how this goes, clean that up. And it's just, it's good. we just get trampled down, honestly. Like, that's it. Unfortunate. I wish Earth had, like, um, a chunky evocation spell in, like, melee range. Fun. Anyways, uh, we have some magic phase attacks that we have performed. One in the Black Alps, where we are trying to take down a Troll King. We've got... Basically, the little Air Gudu hit squad that we tried out, we're going to try out on the Troll King and see how that goes. So, we know what we do. We're just Gift of Flighting, Flighting, and Blessing. But he does Temper Flesh first. That's unfortunate. The Summon Earth Power next. That's fine for us. We don't care about that. And we're going to land. Ooh, we immediately lose one guy. So, this he hits really hard with his Infernal Sword, so... But we immediately counter with 21 and 16, which basically puts him on death's door. Unfortunately, we get a guy stunned in response. It's gonna happen. Oh my god, he just smacked that guy for 43 damage. He has one HP left. Thank goodness for um, Gift of Health staying on people. And smack. We did it. We did it, boys. Very nice. Cool. Uh, so we win in Black Alps, though we lose a single Gudu. We gain a Dragon Helmet and a Red Dragon Scale Mount. Cool. That was pretty worth, I think. Honestly. Um, and then we have a battle in Moss Woods where we Cloud Trapezed a shit ton of people in. But you might notice... We're, uh, we're missing an Oogaloo. I don't know what happened. I assume while I was going through things or like doing the recording or something like that, that I clicked him off or did something. But when I checked the turn, he, he was just sitting in Kailasa, not, not doing a damn thing, not, not doing nothing like defending. Which seems bizarre to me because it, I feel like I would have gotten a, you know, I would have gotten one of the end of turn prompts where like, hey, you're not doing anything with this commander. I don't remember that happening. So I don't know what happened, but I blame myself. So 
The issue being is that that was the Stormcaster. So, no Storm Power or Thunder Strike spam. We'll have to see how this goes. We start off with a Living Clouds. He puts up, uh, what was that, Iron Skin, I think? Yeah. Summon Earth Power. So here, here's the thing, here's the thing. We've seen this happen before, right? He has a Storm Spool, which gives Shock Resistance 15, but because he is casting Iron Skin, his Shock Resistance is down to 10. Okay, so we managed to hit him. Rolled high, sure, cool. He's just going to re regen that, though. Ah! There it goes. He has enough, or he has little enough shock resistance that with high rolls, the lightning swarm, <clears throat> which doesn't give a shit about his protection, is actually proccing and or getting through his lightning res and is occasionally stunning him. Um... Which is really good for us because we're sitting here in the back now casting Phantasmal Warrior and that's not going to do shit to him. We get a second round of Air Elementals off. Um, that's really good because he's going to start kicking the shit out of them. Um, he's got a lot of HP. Let's see how this goes. We are slowly ticking him down. Just kind of barely occasionally doing enough to decrease his HP but then... Then having bad rounds and he starts to like regen, which is not, we're not going to win this way. Um, we start to surround him with, with, um, Phantasmal Warriors. And then as, as the Gudus kind of come in, they actually start to do good spells. They come in and they start to do Steel Breath. They come in and they start to spam Lightning Bolt. And again, right, he's got some shock resistance, but he only has 10 because he cast Iron Skin. But so the Lightning Bolts are actually doing a fair amount, and they are stunning, and they are very high chance to hit because he is, because we're so close, right? Nice. Very nice. Very freaking nice. Um, lucky should have gone more in our favor probably would have gone more in our favor if we had just had that other oogaloo but regardless we get an immaculate shield out of it which is nice we get an iron face which is very nice um armor knights whatever storm spool whatever no big deal uh we did some blood hunting cool nazar the second got attacked by some soul horns and fucked them up uh we had a bump in cloud cap spires let's look at that uh, so we've got a fair amount of Feeds of Darkness here, and here's the shtick. Um, we've got a lot of HP on them right now because we basically have double HP. Um, so normally I would actually be really worried because the Fiends of Darkness, they, they're killy, but they don't have good defensive stats. But they've got a lot of HP right now. So... They are able to basically fuck up this party real easily. 37 kills. <clears throat> no losses. Okay, uh, we get a bump in Cloudcap Alps. And I think this is where we where we killed the um where we killed the Troll King. But we moved units into that afterwards, right? So not only are my two gudus, two surviving gudus here, but we've also got two vampire lords with some storm demons here. Um, so let's see how this goes. All right, all these storm demons land. Um, and now the Gudus land, and they are, you know, they they hit quite a bit harder than the uh, Fiends of Darkness do. So come in and smack this guy for 36. That's pretty good. Now he's killing the shit out of people, and then what did he get hit? Did he get hit with by one of these guys? Someone just hit him for 40.
Goo yeah, another Gudu hit him for, for 48 damage. It's crazy that that was in such rapid session. I, I think it was the same Gudu. Just hit him twice. Attack roll 33 versus defense roll 22. Damage roll of 40 plus 13 versus 12 plus 5. So much damage. Damage increased because of slash damage. Damage exceeded maximum possible in hit area. Reduced to 36. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. This Gudu had this Melkart's fucking number. So basically, just because he has a, a screen, though, you know? So we got uh, a... We had a fight in Resting Heights with a Tartarian. Uh, with one of our Tartarians. But we lost, I'm assuming, because we just got... Um, not that we died, but that we just couldn't kill all of the undead. Which is unfortunate. Oh, the Shadow Brands actually, yeah, the Shadow Brands go real bad against these because it doesn't affect inanimate beings. So he's got no AoE. He's just got the single hit. Oof. How unfortunate. Good to know. Okay, I'll have to get him a different weapon. Uh, okay. What else do we have? Uh, witness the fight in Misty Bog. No big deal. Uh, we have a brief battle in Erd. We just barely lose this, basically. Um, you know. Actually, uh, a very interesting note. We'll watch this real quick. Uh, this is way closer than our normal things, our normal battles like this are. And there's a very specific reason. The reason is because there are thralls in here. Um, and this is actually a bad thing for Lanka because it means when they get into range of our Lich, they actually heal our Lich. Um, which is not normally a thing that happens. You can see his HP kind of like ticking up consistently from the... And then he starts spamming Withered Bones and he takes out entire groups as he does. Um, and it honestly looks like he might be okay here for a second. Right? Because the invulnerability is, is working against the Thralls. But then uh, this, uh, this monkey... Comes in and just smacks the shit out of him. Alright. Um, and then we have a battle in Rapabolia. We'll watch that last. There's a battle here in Halbathria. As a bunch of freaking barbs come at us after the fact. But, uh, I mean, it's a, a 20 PD... Gift of Health Province. I love this, right? So we're able to very easily chase them off. Very cool. Um, how bathroom. And let's watch in Rafabolia. What are we doing? We know we have taken a hit, right? We have lost a Vampire Lord, um, which is unfortunate. But got all of this stuff at the ready, and we are up against not much. Honestly, not, not not that much. Oh, let's see how it goes. Our Kusarikus are out in front. A, oh, I love watching this. So many storm demons creates a situation where you just have... Oh, I was going to say, damn, a lot of people are really hurt. But yeah, it was from that, uh, that Flames from the Sky. You have so many storm demons, they just... Oh, you just... Entire swaths of people just, like, obliterated. Oh, God, that's graphic. Okay, we got more of those, uh, the Shadow Blasts, which didn't really go as far as I was wanting them to, unfortunately. Um, we get our Mass Enslave, which we actually get a couple of 
Horite shamans here, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then our our Anzus and our Storm Demons arrive, and it's a swift obliteration. It's it's very very quick. Uh, it's just goodness, just goodness. Okay. Um, so in the Battle of Raphabolia, we lose one corpse constru construct. Uh, we gain three Horite shamans, one Acha, um, and one Yeti. We came out positive four <laughs> in that battle, but it was versus seventy-three units. We we're I mean massively overprepared. That was not a real resistance. Um, and in in truth, we lost a vampire lord getting over here, and we lost, what was it? It was like 60 units or something like that to that flames from the sky. But I feel like that at this point is kind of just the, the, what's the idea, right? That's just the cost of doing business, that type of thing. I, I again, with flames from the sky, I don't know how difficult this would be, but they really need to be able to give you a list of who died right it, it it it's it seems incredibly just strange to me that we're just like oh well you lost 60 units okay which 60 units though like you could just tell me okay you lost uh five flagellants you lost your vampire lord you lost 12 kidnids and you lost two crystal sorceresses like i can't remember if i i could go check the vod but i can't remember if i had more than nine crystal sorceresses i don't know i don't think i did because i think i sent uh 12 total uh communion slaves but still it's it's just strange right it's just like that seems like really pertinent information why are you hiding that information from the player anyways we win rafa Bolia. cool great fantastic um, in Belagor, we lose a little over, we lose about 3.5k population, which really sucks. Gain some unrest and have a bunch of disease. Um, that's not good because that is a, a blood hunting province. And that, <laughs> that just knocked it underneath the blood hunting um, threshold. So that's unfortunate. Um... In Rim Mountains, we gained some death gems. In Halbathria, we lost more population than we had the Barbarian event attack. Fortification of White Forest is unharmed. Um, our troops in Belagor are starving now. Of course they are. What are we doing this turn? Well, uh, we are moving out of Belagor and into Dershid. Uh, this, was a this has been the plan for a while. Just having to do it earlier than intended unfortunately. Um, other news, right? What else are we doing? We are moving some units up to Kailasa. We're going to start sending vampire lords there, um, but we're also going to start sending um, storm demons there, right? That's going to be one of the next jumping off points. So that's where we're headed. Speaking of sending storm demons, we're actually we need to adjust this. Okay, I want to send that vamp lord down south. Well, I say down south, but basically back to help Athria. Um, we are moving around, continuing to raid, um, etc. But the big deal here, again, we're like raiding and resting hides, raiding in Gaetia, um, moving into Halamire, attacking into Stone he Heavens, um, etc., etc. We're moving all around. But the big deal is we are moving the army out of Pangaea this turn. Um, it's going to take us several turns to get to White Forest, so we're going to move. Uh, here to Wick Forest this first turn. Next turn will be to Andoria. Uh, we're specifically taking this route because these these provinces have laboratories for us to to 
pick up gear, for us to um, pick up gems, etc. But everything is mostly set uh, if we were to get into a fight. So that's good. Um, we're gonna re we're gonna send that pack of a hundred or so storm demons over to help out with this army cracking white forest. And what did Cracking Raphabolia get us? Cracking Raphabolia got us the Throne of the First Age. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're going to get two Enkidu Elders here. We're going to try to start... Oh, uh, we can't. There's no population here. That is unfortunate. Well, hmm. That's poop. Man. Y'all, y'all done blood hunted everything to the ground, didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Damn it! <laughs> All right, whatever. It is what it is. Um, we're claiming the throne. This is the throne of the first stage. It gets us dominion spread. Of course, we want dominion spread. It increases magic, which we kind of don't care about. It's kind of a, it's kind of a wash, right? Like increasing magic in our Dominion means that we're going to have an easier time doing things like Enslave Mine or, or like Soul Slay. So that's cool, but we're also going to get that stuff easier as well. Whatever. Um, but uh, troops getting plus one magic resistance is really nice. We're very, we're very excited about that. That's really good. I'm happy about that. So we're claiming the throne this turn. Um, we are building a temple here in Raphabolia this turn. We're preaching with a whole bunch of people this turn. Um, going back to calling Anzus. Uh, we'll talk more about the rituals and the forgings next turn. We're sending out um, more tarts towards the Pangean front. Going to start uh, trying to hit in this area, control this area, and trying to start looking. Obviously, we're heading towards right, White Forest now, but we're going to start looking at Realm of Silence. Realm of Silence is one of the big holdouts for Hinnom. Um, not super exciting, but is what it is. Is there any other important moves? I don't think so, really. Um, just moving some new communion slaves or masters around. Um, okay. Okay. Let's talk about rituals. So rituals on the docket this turn. We have got, um, of course, two more tarts coming in, right? Um, we've got three castings of Kusarikus, four castings of Corpse Construction, um, seven castings of Anzus. I'm actually somewhat interested in um, not... not Leaving this force here in Raphabolia, for the most part, and rebuilding a new force here in Halbathria. Um, we're going to consider that over the course of the next several turns. We'll see how it goes. Um, but we've got more Forces of Darkness, more Curse of Blood, more Infernal Tempest. We're probably going to have to hold our horses on that pretty shortly because our blood hunting has not been as good the last few turns. And um, the amount that we have had to burn through with Rings of the Warrior um, has been pretty severe. And then we run into stuff like losing out in Belagor. So we're not going to get any blood hunting from there next turn. We're going to have to go to Dershid and fire up for the following turn. Um, I don't think... Uh, it's possible, right? Like we could drop something in Asad or maybe go to Olentova. Um, but we're kind of... Um, Gotta be careful about. We could add in another blood hunting province, and in fact, we might have to. So I'm I've been trying to look around for that. I think Olentova probably is one of the go-to locations, and then maybe to Assad. Um, we'll see. What's up next? Um, we've got one casting of Naiad Warriors. Um, this is basically all in Kailasa. One casting of Naiad Warriors, one casting of Summon Yeti. We're doing a single divine name this turn rather than a Gift of Reason uh, because only one of our tarts is what I would call good to go. Um, so this tart is gonna, gonna get divine named. Who's... 
five. No, there's ten Dominion here. Weird. That's that seems very strange. I thought these guys naturally had more HP. Thinking of the wrong ones? Yeah, I'm apparently thinking of the wrong ones. Okay, cool. Um, and then the last ritual that we're doing is we're doing another summon flame spirit over here in trackless wastes. That will bring our flame spirit total in the trackless wastes up to three, which is kind of where we're trying to go with the amount of skull of fires and flame helmets that we have, right? I uh, want to make sure we have at least three flames from the sky casters at any particular point so that they can lambe the shit out of something should they need to. Um, what else? We are... That's it for rituals. So on to forging. We're forging a single demon vein this turn for the next crystal sorceress that we pop out. We're doing three amulets of anti-magic, two rings of regeneration, uh, three boots of the messenger, two rings of the warrior, two dragon helmets, three frost brands, three scutatal volturnuses, one armor of the knights, and four endless bags of wine. Why are we doing endless bags of wine? Um, primarily we're doing endless bags of wine to make sure that our blood hunting provinces don't go over supply usage and start causing issues, but also because we are getting closer to having supply issues in Ur, I mean, we're a very long way away from that, but if we were to try to mobilize this army, we'd, we'd have a lot of problems. Um, trackless waste, potentially the same type of situation. Um, but the biggest issue is because we lost so much in Belagor this turn, I want to go ahead and make sure we have a stockpile um, for Angia, right? See, right? I'm glad I checked this. Um, we want to send... He is stuff out already. You know? Um, so we're basically just trying to make sure that everyone um, gets all kitted up um, and can walk through wherever we want them to walk through. Like Kailasa, uh, got, got no real... Uh, actually, they've got two, and they're still three, four, shit. They've got 200 supply reduction, and they're still sitting at 300 supply usage. So trying to march on something like Realm of Silence, not going to work. So we're probably going to we're probably going to be producing um, quite a few endless bags of wine over the course of the next few turns. Um, and that's pretty much it. The rest of the gear was all kind of like uh, we've got. I think we got three or four, maybe five tarts. I'm pu I'm putting all my tarts in Kunaral, by the way. I'm sorting my Tartarians there. Um, and just letting them, you know, do what they need to do from there. But we've got a lot of tarts now. We're trying to make more gear for them. Some of it's cheap gear. Some of it's I'm just trying to, like, get, get stuff on them, get bodies, get them moving, etc., um, because they're, they don't have to be super threats to be threats, right? Like a tart with basic gear is still going to wreck a hundred undead with no mage support, right? And they still require a response from someone. Responses like putting together, um, teleport assassination squads, etc., etc., cloud trapezing units in, that takes time. And and what I mean now is is like it's the fatigue of playing a game like this, right? Um, the more easy, simple stuff, more threats that I can throw out there to fatigue a person down, make them make mistakes, make them forget about something, etc. This is mostly geared towards the concept of getting ready to try to deal with Lanka, right? But you know, it's it's just a good concept in theory. That's pretty much it, though. So, um, yeah. Kind of anticlimactic with Rafa Bolia, honestly. I'm anticipating that we're going to have more of a fight in White Forest, but that might not be the case. He might have pulled out of White Forest and into Vilia uh, ahead of time. I might actually poke my head into, um, into White Forest next turn and see what I see there. But, you know, we're... We've got plenty of big fights in the future. They just might not all... They might not be big fights with Hinnom anymore. 
Um, of note, taking a look at the throne situation again, uh, we have three, six, eight. The throne of the first stage is... A two, so this is going to put us up at ten. Ugh. Um, it's we're still a ways away, right? But if we can get, interesting. Doesn't have golden. What? Ah. He doesn't have it. They're not a throne here anymore. Yeah, it's got the little throne icon. I just don't know what that throne is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had, my, had a little, mof, little mini freak out moment. He doesn't have... He, he, that doesn't make any sense, though. Is that the throne of eternal suffering? No, that's not the throne of eternal suffering. This is the throne of eternal suffering. How does that make sense? I'm just blind. That's how it makes sense. It's the throne of the sun. Sorry. Oh my goodness. I was having a I was having a freak out. I was like, how is this possible? Um anyways, if we can get the throne of the sun, which is uh this one in silence. Um, and we can get the throne of the first order. Then it's basically, uh, it's a, you know, put up your dukes between me and Lanka, probably over Javalkish or Sleepy Wolds for my side of things. And then definitely over, you know, Rafa Bolia, um, Realm of Silence and White Forest for Lanka. So, um, hopefully we have prepped enough. Hopefully we are good to go. A very big part of my focus is going to be kind of switching gears over to the east side of our territory um, in the near future. And we'll see how it goes. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.